All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is. Hi, Dwight. Okay, do that. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is a overview of the our Rotary Foundation. So, so if you ever had uh, questions about the Rotary Foundation was a mystery, um, it is. Um, when you look at it on the surface and people talk about it, it seems quite complex, but it really isn't when you break it down. Uh, the things that we do and how we fund those things, that's what this session is about. So, I call it Rotary Foundation 101. Just a, as a starter, I thought this is an interesting, some interesting statistics. This is money we spend each year in the U.S. <coughs> on different stuff. Um, Snack foods, coffee, cosmetics, weight control products, $33 billion uh, to, uh, for weight control products when I mean, we really just have to tell people to eat less and exercise more. Legal gambling, a half, half a trillion dollars. Um, so th this is, if you look at this list, this is essentially disposable income that people are spending their money on. Uh, the Rotary Foundation should be able to get a little bit of that, I would think, to help humanity. About one in six people in the world live on less than a dollar a day. Half the world's population lives on less than two dollars a day. Okay? That's an amazing statistic. It's an amazing statistic. We don't necessarily always think about the other four billion people in the world. We think about the two billion people that are in our club. 25,000 children under the age of six die from preventable causes. 25,000 children under the age of six die from preventable causes every single day. Preventable cause, what are preventable causes? Diarrhea, big killer. Malaria, big killer. Uh, AIDS, big killer. Okay, all preventable. Diarrhea because they don't have uh, waterborne disease, they don't have clean water to drink. The lack of a clean glass of water, they die of something as simple as diarrhea. So the world needs Rotarians. We, the world really needs us, and the world really needs us and the Rotary Foundation. Because the Rotary Foundation is our vehicle to do the work that we do. I can guarantee you, that even though the Rotary Foundation was not around when Rotary was founded, it came some 15 or so years later, I guarantee you the Rotary, Rotary would not exist today without the Rotary Foundation. They go hand in hand hand in hand, because the Rotary Foundation is the enabling tool that Rotarians have to do the work that we do. And I love the mission. This is the Rotary Foundation mission. The key word in there to remember is to enable. Our, the mission of the Foundation is to enable Rotarians to do the work that Rotarians do. And that's exactly what it does. Advance the world understanding, goodwill, and peace through improvement of health, support education, alleviation of poverty, and in particular extreme poverty. That's why we need our Rotary Foundation. Why is the Rotary Foundation unique? There are many things that make it unique, and I talked about having the Rotary Foundation your charity of choice. There's a lot of reasons to make it your charity of choice, and it is unique in several uh, fascinating ways. It addresses some of the greatest education humanitarian needs. Many foundations do that. Uh, it, its world reach is greater than the United Nations. Something that's very unique about the Rotary Foundation is it has boots on the ground. It, 177 countries, 200 geographic areas around the world, because that's where Rotarians are. How many other foundations do you know, or, or charitable organizations, have that kind of stretch around the world? We can go where politicians and religious groups cannot go, and we have, because we are not a religious organization, we are not a political organization. We have gone into countries that refused uh, help from any other organization except for Rotary because of it, exactly that. Okay. We've been able to stop wars temporarily to go do polio organizations. What an organization can do that? Okay. We can leverage and mobilize our people to people contacts. When you get, when you understand how big this thing called Rotary is, you'll see that we have a network of people that stretches the entire planet and speaks every language. Things that we do better than other charities, we are donor-driven. What does that mean? 
means I'm a donor, I give to the Rotary Foundation, but I'm also a project leader. I'm taking for the Rotary Foundation, and I'm using that money to a project that I've decided that's a good project to do for humanity. Okay? It's donor driven. That's very unique, very special about our foundation. Bridges the business and inter uh, community with the international needs. We manage costs very, very, very effectively. Art said, talked about every dollar goes and is spent on a project 100%. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Provide ongoing stewardship. There is no organization that provides better stewardship with your money. Rotarians love to complain about the stewardship, especially if you've done a, a grant or something else because there's a lot of paperwork and follow-up and reports. And the Rotary Foundation trustees want to make sure that every dollar you said you were going to spend on this program is spent on that program and it's spent well. It's very good stewardship. We love to complain about it, but we want that stewardship. We want to know when Nate donates $100 to the Rotary Foundation. We want to be able to tell what look Nate in the eye and say, that $100 went to a program that you intended it to go to. And we respond to uh, evolving world needs uh, and donor, donor interest, okay? Our interests. Anybody here with Char Charity Navigator? Yeah. Charity Navigator is an organization that rates nonprofit organizations, like foundations. Rotary, uh, Rotary, the Rotary Foundation is a four-star charity navigator charity, meaning it's the highest rank that you can get. It has been four stars for a while. That's because we do have very, very good stewardship for our money, and because all the money that's donated goes to the cause that it was intended for. I don't want to, just as this is just for comparison purposes. I hope there's no Kiwanis or Lions in the room. Kiwanis and Lions have their own foundations. One and two-star foundations by Charity Navigator. I looked them up. Okay, I'm only saying that to highlight the, the fact that it's not easy to get four stars, and there are not that many four-star charities. Your Rotary Foundation is one of them. Okay, so let's talk about some of the programs of the of the Rotary Foundation. Generally, programs of the Rotary Foundation are divided up into <coughs> two parts. On one side, you have humanitarian programs, and on the other side, you have educational programs. That's kind of how they divide it up. So let's talk about those programs. Matching grants is in the humanitarian programs category. How many of you ever heard of a matching grant? Almost have you ever done a matching grant? Or been involved in a matching grant? Okay. Why haven't the rest of you? Why haven't you, if you're a donor to the Rotary Foundation, you've given your money, why wouldn't you come back to the foundation and say, I want to get some of that money back and do a project that I think is important, or my club thinks is important, or my group of clubs thinks is important. Why would you leverage your donations? It's a donor-driven foundation. So I urge you to get involved in matching grants. Here's how matching grants work. It's a pyramid scheme, okay, in a good way. <laughs> your club gives a little bit of money. You have to have an international partner. So an international partner, a club in some other part of the world where you're going to do a project is your international pro partner. They put in a little bit, bit of money, okay? So let's say they put in $100, you put in $100. Both of your districts will match that $100, okay? Now how much money do you have? 400 How much did your club put in? 100 Rotary, Rotary Foundation will match what the district, well, first of all, they'll match what your club put in, 15 both clubs. So now you've got $400, you've got another $50, $50, now you're up to $500, right? In addition to that, the Rotary Foundation will match what the districts put in. How much did the districts put in? $200. 200. So now you have $500, now you have $700. How much did your club put in? Who wouldn't want to take yeah. advantage of that kind of a matching grant program? Yes? So international does 50% of the club and 100% of the district? That's correct. Okay. That's exactly right. On, and the district will normally match 100%. Most districts do. It's up to the district foundation committee, but most districts will match 100% or more sometimes. Okay, there's club one and club two, right? They put in 100. They put in 100. There's district one. There's district two. They put in 100. They put in 100. Because they're going to match what the club did. Okay? And here's Rotary Foundation. We call it TRF, 
I say TRF, that means the Rotary Foundation. Okay, that's actually their, their name. The is part of their name. Okay, the Rotary Foundation is going to match what the district did, 100%. Plus, they're going to match 50% of the cash that the club put in. And they're going to do the same thing over here to this district. Okay? So you got 100, 100, 100, or $600, $700. And how much again did your club put in? $100. Do you see how this can grow? You see how a club might say, well, I can't build a water well in Africa. I can't buy mosquito nets for, for kids. I can't do this. It takes a little bit of money matching grants turns into a very large humanitarian project. What if your club puts in a couple thousand dollars? Now this turns into fourteen thousand dollars. But if you get two or three other clubs to put in a, a couple thousand dollars, this really quickly turns into a hundred thousand dollars. Now you can do some very large sustainable projects on really not that much investment. And it really does work really well when you get clubs to collaborate together, put in a thousand, thousand here, a thousand there, and then you get all these matches, it builds very quickly. Now, the reality of it is, if you're one of these clubs in the US or Western Europe or Australia, you may have a lot of more opportunity to put in your hundred dollars than the club in Kenya has. So it doesn't have to be that you put in a hundred, they put in a hundred, maybe that you put in a couple thousand bucks and they put in five hundred bucks they get their matches, okay? But still, it builds very, very quickly. Yes? Last year I went on a wheelchair trip um, to Mexico, and um, I, our club didn't even, I didn't even know what to expect. So when they started asking for money, I went, oops. So I ended up partnering with six other clubs, five other clubs, six of us each put in 300 each, because we had $1,800 was needed from the United States. So that multiplied and multiplied. And then I went back and begged forgiveness from my club. Yeah. So, but now I know how to do it, so I'm really out of this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Charlie, how do you identify a club in another country and, and partner up with them? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'll give you a quick answer, but the long answer, George can give you the other session on matching grants. The quick answer is there's a great resource called matchinggrants.org. Matchinggrants.org or matchinggrants.com. I can't remember. But matching grants dot something. It is a database, very easy to use one, that searchable, that says here's all these rotary projects that clubs have put in all over the world, say we're looking for partners, we're looking for international partners to do these projects. And all you have to do on that website is say is sit, click a button and say, hey, my club would like to be a partner in that, because it'll tell you all about the project, how much money they're looking for from partners, all that kind of stuff. Even facilitates doing some of the paperwork through the Rotary Foundation. So it's a great, great resource uh, for finding a project. You can search by country, by type of project. Like I want to do a well. I want to do a water project in South America, and they'll find all the projects. Good. Yeah. Now, question. Uh, I just have a quick comment on that. We, we did a hundred dollars with every club in our district uh, just now. We raised forty-five hundred dollars, and we're doing a twenty-five thousand dollar water clean water project in India that serves 150,000 school kids. Wow. 100 bucks a club. 100 bucks a club. Okay. That's, the power of, that's the power of combining efforts and leveraging our Rotary Foundation. The donations, that, after all, that we made, right? So why shouldn't we go get that, those and use them, put them to work? Okay, that's the whole point of matching grants. Okay, group study exchange. Who's ever hosted a group study exchange team member? Hey, I have. If you haven't, I put it on put it on your bucket list. Okay. Next time someone comes to your club and says we're looking for a host homes for the GSC team, <coughs> through the, don't go you know, like this. Go, yeah, me, 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 I'll host them. That'd be the greatest experience you ever have. Okay? I encourage you to get involved. Group Stay Exchange, one of my favorite programs. Group Stay Exchange is a program where we send groups of young professionals, non rotarians to a district on some other part of the planet, that same district sends a group of non-Rotarian young professionals to our district, and they exchange for about four to six weeks. Yes. I was a GSC team member. That's why I'm here. That's why you're, and you're a Rotarian. That's right. Okay. So absolutely, if you are a non-Rotarian when you went on GSC. It inspired you to become a Rotarian, and so there's no better resource to tell you about GSE than right, 
right here. So where did you go? Japan. You went to Japan, and, and what kind of experience was it? It was amazing. It was amazing. Okay. Life changing, right? Absolutely. The homestays are incredible. Life changing. And I can say he is now a super Rotarian. <laughs> I, I can see his cape. <laughs> Question. If, does this work if you want to bring a student, say, from Africa over to the U.S.? Is it reverse, or how do you do that? Well, the group study exchange is always exchanged between two districts. A small group of four to six, a small group of four to six, they exchange for four to six weeks. It's not really for students, it's for professionals. Okay, so it's a professional and cultural exchange. So while they're while they're here, we host them around our district. And you may have seen GSE teams come through, give their presentation from different countries. They're here to learn something about their profession in another country and also get cultural exchange. And we sit and do the same. Uh, every district just about participates in this. It's funded through your Rotary Foundation dollars. It's a great program. I like it because if you go back to the mission of the Rotary Foundation, one of the missions is to build goodwill and peace. This is one of the best programs we have to build goodwill and peace. One person at a time. When you send someone to a foreign country and they're hosted in a bunch of different homes in that country and they get to know the people there, or we get to know them when they come here, that's why hosting is such a great experience. That builds goodwill. That builds peace. Even if it's from a country that you may not agree with politically, it's hard to foster hate towards someone or a country or a people if you've had them at your dinner table and you've petted their dog. And um, that's why that's why it's a true. Back, back to my other. I have a school in Africa. Mm -hmm. My husband and I just visited my child many years ago. But say, does this still work if I said I wanted to sponsor four teachers to come over here from Zambia mm -hmm. to America and I would sponsor them as the Rotarian and for a professional? Absolutely, absolutely. You can have vocationally focused teams that are all in the same vocation, and they come over here and, and for six weeks, for six weeks, for six weeks, whatever. And in fact, you'll learn in the future vision uh, session, the future vision of the Rotary Foundation. All GSC's teams will be exactly like that. Okay, they will be vocationally focused on uh, education and projects. So uh, it is changing. Um, they'll be. They'll still, traditional GSEs will still be around, but they'll have to be funded completely from DDF. You'll understand what DDF is when I get to it. Okay. Uh, but they'll be funded through the Rotary Foundation 100% from trustees on these new, they call it, in fact, they're changing the name to vocational uh, exchange or something like that. So it's exactly what you're talking about. Part of the future vision. District Simplified Grants. It's kind of a, it's exactly what it says. It's just exactly like a matching grant, only it's on a smaller scale and very simple to do. What The way this works is the district, you're going to see the district has a lot of fiduciary responsibility for these funds. The district gets a single matching grant called the District Simplified Grant, and then the district can dole it out to all the clubs in the district in you know, almost any way they want to, to do projects which fall under the same matching grant guidelines. These don't have to be international. Matching grant has to be an international project with an international partner. District Simplified Grant can be used for a grant a project in your community or an international project. Usually much smaller, like, uh, you know, uh, in, in, the district has some, like, uh, I'll get to your question in just a second. The district has some discretion on how they want to do this. In my district, they say, hey, we'll do grants up to $1,000 if the club puts in a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, question. Is this where the district gets the matching grants for the matching this grant is, one, this is, or is this completely, it's completely different? Completely separate. This so a, the district program. has a little fund for the matching grant fund, yes. and then the district has a little fund for the district simplified. Actually, they have one fund. <coughs> you can use some of it for this, and some of it for that, and some of it for, for other things. So yes, this comes out of the district fund, which we'll talk about. So does matching grants. So does ambassadorial scholars. Um, I'll show you how, how that works. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're here, right? Mm -hmm. And Biosphere Scholarships is an educational program of the Rotary, Fo of the Rotary Foundation. Uh, District 5 by 10 has a great long tradition of sponsoring, uh, I think, uh, two Ambassador Scholars every year. Okay? The Ambassador Scholarship program is bigger than the Fulbright and the, um, what's the other big one? Uh, Rose. It's bigger than Fulbright and Rose combined. You ever hear about it? Okay. 
a, it's a best kept secret on the planet, but it's a $26,000 scholarship for graduate school studies overseas. Very, very competitive. 5510 has been very good about sponsoring um, bachelor scholars. 5490, not as much in recent years, but we did sponsor one last year in Katie Murphy. She's a graduate of West Point. Uh, fantastic gal. Yeah. Large. Uh, this program is changing also under future vision. Rotary Centers for International Studies, uh, a short way of thinking of that is Peace Scholars. It's another scholarship program, but this is a program at six of the top universities around the world. It's a two-year scholarship for a two-year specialized program in peace and conflict resolution. Highly, highly competitive. The people that they choose for this are, are, young, are uh, professionals who have been out there in the trenches and come back for this graduate program. Okay? People from NGOs, governments, uh, uh, that kind of thing. People are already working in this field and we give them specialized training in peace and conflict resolution in a, in a two year graduate program. Very good universities. Um, I like to think about this as Rotary, this program started about a decade ago. Rotary, I think, went out in the world and said, hey, we want to send some people to our business is peace and goodwill. Let's train some people to do it. Let's see who's out there who has training to do this, and we'll send them to that training. They didn't find anything. So in the Rotary fashion, they said, there are no peace builders out there. Nobody's making peace builders. Let's make our own. And over a series of decades, we will put thousands of these people out into those NGOs and governments and, and we will start building our network of peace builders. What are the seven leading universities? Do you know them? Off the top of my head, no. Um, um, it's on the site. Actually. It's on the site. There's one in Brazil, uh, France, um, <coughs> Japan, I think. Uh, Berkeley was one of them, but they got kicked out. Um, <laughs> too radical. <laughs> <laughs> I think they, they possibly we talk about stewardship, Rotary, they started straight from from what Rotary said this is what this program is about and we're funding it. Um, so you know they they're not doing it anymore. And I have to that's my son's alma mater, so I have to apologize for them. Although he was like Mr. Young Republican at Berkeley, so he was in the minority. Um, Folio Plus. Obviously, we talked a lot about that this morning. Biggest, most ambitious public private health initiative ever uh, launched. Uh, we already covered that, but your Rotary Foundation is covered in part of that. ask a quick question yeah. here. They always talk about it, I mean, is I immunizing children. Is this, uh, these drops work in adults? They do, but the way the polio virus works is it mostly inflicts children. Okay. Okay, so you really want to get those children immunized before the age of six. Okay. If they're immunized before the age of six, um, they're good to go. The problem with some of those immunizations in some of these countries, if you go to Indiana and you immunize a kid against polio, just give them two drops and they're good for life. Okay? If you go to northern India, where the children are very sick, they don't have clean water, diarrhea, you give two drops, it runs right through them. You have to come back, give them two more drops. You have to come back, give them two more drops. You have to, it, it's a lot, when we say we've immunized two billion children, two billion children, many of them multiple times to get them to, to, to be effective. If one of the things I learned at the conference in New Orleans was that the reason that there's still that 1%, one reason is that they'll drive as far as they can get by plane, plane train or automobile, and then they have to, to hoof it to these villages, and then they have to make these repeat visits over and over. Yeah, it's very, very difficult and expensive, and there's a cold chain involved. The polio vaccine has to be kept at a certain temperature. So when you go in these remote places, there's a very strict cold chain of that vaccine that has to be kept all along the way. It's, it's, it's logistically, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a lot of great programs that we're proud of, right? How do we fund that stuff? Where's all the money come from? Well, you and I both know it mostly comes from us. It doesn't have to. Anybody can contribute to the Rotary Foundation. It's a charity like any other. You get your friends to donate $100 to the Rotary Foundation. They look, you're going to support all these great programs. Why not donate to this instead of that? That's awesome. 
we would love to get more donations outside of Rotary. That's one of our goals. Okay? We have this program called Every Rotarian Every Year. That's where we encourage every Rotarian to donate at least $100 every year. We hope everyone in this room is doing that. e is a campaign to get everyone to donate $100. It's critical to our goal of meeting all of the needs for funding these programs. And uh, we need it. Okay. You heard a little bit about the permanent fund. We had a short section about the permanent fund. You can become a benefactor and request a society member of the permanent fund. That's the permanent fund. We also have the annual programs fund. That's the $100 a year fund. Okay? Isn't there just one foundation? There's just one. This is part of, this is where, this is, we're getting into the section that people start to glaze over, okay? Because this is where everyone goes, oh, it's too complicated. I'm going to try to break it down for you where it's easy. There's one Rotary Foundation which, which, which has multiple pots of money, okay? Annual programs fund, the permanent fund, I don't show it on here, Polio Plus fund, okay? Sometimes there's disaster relief funds. It's just like budgeting your money, but it's all in one account, okay? But we treat those, we treat those pots differently. The annual programs fund, there's, there are two ways, uh, but just, there's two, fund, two main funds, but just one Rotary Foundation. You can think of the annual programs fund as our checking account, and the permanent fund as our savings account. Really want to think about it that way. Okay, can you see why I'm that? The annual programs funds is the fund that pays for all these humanitarian educational programs. It's funded mainly through cash, through regular giving by Rotarians, like your hundred dollars every year, all hair society, all that stuff. Um, if you're given twenty-five dollars a quarter on your <coughs> bill, this is all going into the annual programs fund. Fund these programs. Every Rotarian every year is an annual programs fund program. Commonly known by some people as your Paul Harris donation. I hear that a lot. People who have no idea what the Rotary Foundation is say, I give to Paul Harris. And, and I ask him, have you met him lately? <laughs> because he's not doing that well. <laughs> You're not giving to Paul Harris. Paul Harris is a great Rotarian, obviously, the founder of Rotary. Um, but you're giving to the Rotary Foundation. And Paul Harris being, becoming a Paul Harris Fellow is one recognition level of your giving, and we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? Just like every every charity, there's different recognition levels for different levels of giving. Being a Paul Harris Fellow is one of those recognition levels, okay? The other thing about the annual programs fund is all the donations are spent after three years, 100%. You, you, spend, you give a dollar today, you know, in three years, that dollar is spent on a program. Okay, Art mentioned share. This is a hopefully simplified way of looking at the share, but I'll go through it with you. You donate some money. It's invested for three years. Why is it invested for three years? This is very unique about a foundation or, or any charity. We earn, we get earnings from this. Where do the earnings go? They go to pay all of our overhead. How is it that we can spend 100% of your money on a program? It's because of this. We're a foundation, we have staff, we have lots of volunteers obviously, but there's people in, in Evanston, in, you know, in the big building there, if you've been there, that work on the Rotary Foundation. There's fund development people, there's people who produce materials and you know, recognition and brochures and go out and help do all that stuff. But all of those people are, and all of that stuff is paid for by investing your donations for three years. Now at the end of three years, that money is split 50-50, okay? 50% 50 of it goes to the trustees that are talked about as a board of trustees, which are volunteer Rotarians. And 50% of it goes to something called, we call DDF. If you were past this, your governor throw that word around a lot, DDF. My DDF is this, my DDF is that. Okay, this is what they're talking about. This fund of money has come back after three years into the district, okay? From your donations. Okay, so you donated money, half of that money is coming right back into your district to do projects in your district. The matches on those grants is coming out of this pot. Okay, district simplified grants is coming out of this pot. Wouldn't you want this to be as big as possible? So that your district clubs could do more work? Because this, this is money that's going just to your clubs in your district. 
how do you make this pot as big as possible? By giving more. But this is a great reason to give more, right? And you can see that the, this money is coming right back to you to make those decisions. There's a committee in your district that makes those decisions. You could be on that committee. Raise your hand. Say, I want to be part of deciding how these district designated funds are spent. Okay? Then, all 100% of the money eventually winds up in a Rotary Foundation program. Remember when we said, in a matching grant, some DDF will match what the clubs did? So will the World Fund. They'll match what the districts did. Okay? See, it all comes back to one of the programs that we talked about. But, the <coughs> district, with, from the donations the Rotarians made in that district, gets a lot of say-so in how that money is directed. Maybe this district is really, really interested in doing water wells. And all the clubs are very excited about it. And they get many clubs, they can invest a lot of money in water wells. Because that's what that club, that district, and those clubs decide that's what they want to do. Maybe a different district wants to do something else. But it's donor driven. It's very, very unique in the charity world. Did we see that? And then, of course, you get money from the World Fund as well. Yeah. And this is all the annual. This is all program, annual programs fund, yes. Okay. Yes, this is all your annual giving. It's invested for three years. Boom. So our DDF budget we get every year. And your, our district gets one. Your district gets one. Your DDF budget is the, is 50% of whatever our Rotarians in our district gave three years ago. So it's not a percentage or anything like that. It's, you know, it's what we it's put exactly in. It's exactly 50% of comes what our Rotarians gave three years ago. We can increase that budget anytime we want to, right? Now, permanent fund. Per permanent fund is an endowment, meaning the capital is never spent, only the interest on it is spent. Okay? Whereas the annual programs fund, 100% of it is spent after three years, the permanent fund is an endowment. Okay? Percentage of the earnings go into the annual programs fund to fund programs. Okay, so we take some of the earnings and we divert it to the annual programs fund to supplement the annual programs fund, but the, the, the capital is never spent. It's finally funded mainly with large gifts and bequests. Filling out that little benefactor card, says I'll give $1,000 upon my demise, that's a, that's a donation to the permanent fund, not the annual programs fund. If I say I want to bequest $10,000 when I die, to become a member of the bequest society, that goes into the permanent fund. Of course, the permanent fund doesn't realize that money until you actually die. But, uh, you know, maybe I better not go there. <laughs> I, I was going to say, we have a lot of old Rotarians, so that's going. <laughs> you can go back on the slide. Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay, so you're talking about the that money goes into the three year investment, not the world fund. Actually, it'll go right in the world. It will go, the interest, the interest, the interest only the interest, uh, only the interest in the permanent fund will go right into here. I'll show you that. Okay. Okay. There's another little graphic here. There you go. Okay. So it's invested in a permanent endowment. The earnings only go into the world fund. Okay. And to help the paper projects. Now, why do we need a permanent fund? To make interest. To make interest, but what? Yeah. Sustainability. Sustainability. Mm -hmm. Economies of the world go up and down, right? Giving goes up and down. Part of the future vision is to do more long-term sustainable projects that have bigger impact. You can't really do that if you can't plan out four, five, ten years down the road and know that that funding is going to be there, right? The permanent fund, if you get it big enough, the earnings alone will help to smooth out the highs and lows. That's the idea behind it. And the goal is to get to a billion dollars by, I think, 20. Okay. We're not. We're, we're pretty far from that, but we can do that. A billion dollars sounds like a, a lot of money. Small. It's a small amount of money compared to many endowments around the world. So I think the Harvard University endowment is something like 26 billion dollars. Shriners is gigantic. It's in the teens of billions. Okay, so one billion is very very doable. But the interest off a billion dollars, since we have about a hundred million dollar budget interest of a billion dollars is about that. Okay, so it'll help to smooth out those highs and lows, and that's our goal. We want to do sustainability. What is the Rotary Foundation capital? I do, but I don't have those numbers. I think we're about 
three or four hundred million, I think. Don't quote me. But we have like another three or four hundred million in the quest. They're waiting, right? We're not we're not looking at their watches or anything, but they all know tenants. How are you feeling today? <laughs> for us young, for the younger ones, hey, make that, fill out that card. Say, uh, I'll promise to pay a thousand dollars when I die. This is so far away for you, you know. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, we hope. We hope we we hope we wait a long time before we get it. But Charlie, there's one more point to that. You've got to get it written into your will. Mm -hmm. For bequest society, you do. Yep. For for a ten thousand dollar bequest, they want to see. The insurance policy, the will, whatever, you need to send that paperwork in. For the benefactors, all you have to do is fill out that card I said, I promise. It's but it may test. not work if you don't put it in your will. It may not work, but they're relying on the four-way test that you're going to follow up at some point before you go and, do, and take care of that, okay? But that's all, if you don't have to send any other paperwork, just fill out that card, so I promise, okay? It's really easy. Okay, so the annual program is fine after three years. Uh, uh, this is just a summary. After three years, it's all spent, but it's split between the World Fund and DDF. You now you all know what DDF is, right? The district Designated Fund. And the trustees and the districts share, this is where the share, and this is some, they talk about the share program, they share the responsibility for deciding how those funds are spent. Does that make sense? Okay, and the permanent fund is an endowment. Okay, let's talk a little bit about recognition. This is my wife's favorite pet peeve. There's so many recognition types that can't keep track of the complicated. All these pins and this and that, and there's bequests, and there's Paul Harris, and there's major donors, and you know, on and on, right? It's really not that complicated. Just like every charity, there's recognition levels. And there's recognition levels for annual giving to the annual program fund, and there's different recognition levels for giving to the permanent fund. Okay? That's all you have to really remember. For annual programs fund, sustaining member, I'm a, I promise to give $100 every year to the Royal Foundation. You're a sustaining member. The Triple Crown this morning was what? Sustaining member, Paul Harris Fellow, and benefactor. Pretty achievable. Paul Harris Society is like a sustaining member on steroids. Okay? I promise to give $100 a year. I promise to give $1,000 a year. Many Rotarians can do this. Okay? Um, there's a past district governor in 5500 who's fond of saying, some Rotarians do not like or don't want to give $100 a year to the Rotary Foundation. They're not happy about giving $100 a year to the Rotary Foundation. In fact, they could give a lot more than $100 a year because we want to make every Rotarian happy. They can become Paul Harris Society's members and give $1,000 a year. Okay? Paul Harris Fellow, that's someone who over time or all at once has donated at least $1,000 total to the Rotary Foundation. It could take you a day, it could take you 10 years. But you become a Paul Harris Fellow as a recognition level of the, of the annual program. So multiple health, Paul Harris Fellow, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, all the way up to nine, Paul Harris plus eight, we call it. And then you've donated $9,000. Well, if you donated up, if you, now you're up to $10,000, you're not a multiple Paul Harris Fellow anymore, you're a major donor, $10,000 cumulative. And then above major donor, there's six other levels for donating $10,000, $25,000, $50,000, all the way up to a quarter million dollars, and you become an Arts Fund Society member. Okay? So that's it. This is just all cash, all cash donations to the Rotary Foundation, cumulative, cumulative. Does that make sense? And you could build from one level to the next. And we have many, many. Paul Harris Society members, Paul Harris Fellows, multiple Paul Harris Fellows. We have Arts Club Society members in each district. Believe it or not. Okay. Now the permanent fund is even a little easier. You have benefactors and bequest society members. Benefactor, I promise to give a thousand. Bequest, I promise to give at least ten thousand. And then there's multiple levels for bequests. Ten thousand, twenty-five, fifty, and so forth. Okay? That's it. That's it. That's, that's just, just different recognition levels. And as someone said, I don't know if it was maybe Bart, the, what changes is the, is the jewelry, you know, the number of diamonds and the number of and so forth. 
there's club recognition as well. We got to we got to speed it up. But your club can get recognition for every Rotarian every year, and if everyone in your club is giving a hundred dollars, if you you uh, hundred percent sustaining member club is everybody giving a hundred every Rotarian every year, and your club has a uh, average of 100, even if everybody doesn't participate. Okay, under banners, your club can get for these recognition levels. 100% Paul Harris Fellow Club. We had one last year in our district. That's kind of a point in time thing. Everyone in the club at one point in time is a Paul Harris Fellow. You may get a new member in that blows that for you. Okay, or you may charge a thousand dollars to get into your club. I don't know, but that's a recognition level. There's a district in California. This is a goal for you, Alan. For your predecessor, there's a district in California, a woman district governor, who has a 100% Paul Harris Fellow Club district. How many clubs in the district? I think about 60. Every Rotarian in every club is Paul Harris Fellow Club. Paul Harris Fellow. And she's still alive. Yeah. Now, <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair, there, if you have a district with many very large donors. They have a bazillion points that they can go right. out. Okay, so they just do them out by to all the libertarians that aren't Paul Harris Fellows and make everybody Paul Harris Fellows. So, um, but it's still quite an accomplishment. Okay. So who runs the foundation? Very quickly, there's a board of there's a, uh, a board of trustees who are uh, volunteers. There's the district foundation committee that has a responsibility for all of this DDF. Okay, and you can be a part of that committee. Rotary volunteers and their staff. There's global staff, uh, their paid staff. And the District Rotary Foundation Committee gets to decide how that DDF is doled out. We're going to send the next two years to the team. We're going to match these grants. We're going to do this much in simplified grants, and there's guidelines and so forth. But they're the ones who make those decisions, and you can be part of that decision. -making. They do training like this. It's part of the District Rotary Foundation committee's responsibility. I'm the District Rotary Foundation Chair of my district, so this kind of stuff falls under our responsibility. Uh, fund development and so forth. Future vision plan, what is it? I'm not going to talk too much about it in to that session, but things are changing. Okay, A lot of what I told you is how we have operated, how we will operate for the next year and a half or more, but things will be evolving. Where can I get help? There's lots of help. Okay. Um, your district Rotary Foundation chair is um, in 5510. I should know this. Barb. Barb. Barb is not the DRS. Yes, she is. I'm sorry. So uh, your Rotary Rotary Regional Foundation coordinator, Art, you heard from this morning. He's actually in our district, but he takes care of a lot of California and other places. And. Your, your assistant governors, your district governor, and so forth, are all good resources for finding information. Take this down, 1-866-ROTARY, or contact center at rotary.org. Their full-time job is to answer your questions. Okay? It's a phone bank of people that, I ordered a Paul Harris Fellows for someone in my club, and I don't know where it is or how to do it. They'll show it. I'll take it. They'll walk you through it. How do I, where do I get this form? Uh, they'll, they'll help you with that. What's my giving model to help you with that? Whatever it is, that's what that's what they're there for, and they're very good. Okay, that's it. What we did it. We're four minutes late. But we started late. Any questions? Quickly. Yeah. How long does it take if you have a project and you are applying for a magic grant from the foundation? What is reasonable art in terms of planning and getting questions out through the whole process? Okay. Now, George will be able to answer that much better, but I'll give you a, a range. It depends on how on the ball both participating clubs are, the international partners, your part of your club. The districts are usually right, very supportive and quick. Rotary Foundation is very quick if you've done everything correctly. Where it gets where it gets delays is where things you know, they start going in a loop because the weak well, link in the chain will stop it all. The weak link in the chain will stop it. Somebody didn't sign a form, or somebody, or this information was requested but not included, or whatever it was, and it starts going into a loop, right? Because the Roy Foundation is not going to fund that grant unless every T is crossed and every I is dotted. Okay, so it could take. I've seen matching grants happen in as little as four weeks. Okay, and I've seen it take two years. Yeah. One more thing on that. That's exactly why 
the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gave Rotary $355 million. It's the power of the club and the matching grants, how they work together and get things done and sign off on it. And that's the power of Rotary right there. And that's where it works. Yeah. There's a, there's a little bit of paperwork to do for a matching grant, but my, my gosh, what's the return? Right? For paperwork. Don't let it scare you away. Well, do you feel like that the grants are being used uh, as much as they can be, or is there a lot more out there that people just don't realize? It depends on the year. A couple of years ago, they ran out of money for grants. They did. Yeah. Uh, this year, there was there was enough money for grants. Okay. Uh, as far as the, they're not competitive. Most if they're under twenty five thousand dollars, that you're asking twenty five thousand dollars from the world fund, they're non competitive. As long as they meet the guidelines and there's money, they'll get funded. Okay. Above twenty-five thousand dollars to become competitive, up to three hundred thousand dollars. I'm talking about the money that you're going to get matched from the Rotary Foundation, not the total project, right? Um, then they go to the board of trustees and they. But this, if you're asking for twenty-five thousand, that means you've already got another twenty-five thousand at least from all the other matches. You're going to do a fifty thousand dollar project. Those are non-competitive as long as they're money. They'll do it. Now this year there was money. Last year there was money. Two years ago they ran out of money. It depends on what? <coughs> donations. It depends on our donations. From three years ago. It is donor driven. Okay? So let's donate and then use those monies to do the work that we do. Does that make sense? Okay.